The top 10 mistakes made when using failure modes and effect analysis covered in this video was part of a larger presentation titled How to Get More Out of Your FMEAs, which was presented by Richard Harpster at the Quality Expo Detroit, which took place on June 7th and 8th in 2006. The top 10 mistakes were selected in the following manner. Thousands of FEMAs were reviewed, which were created over the past 16 years in a wide variety of industries. The selection of the top 10 mistakes was difficult since there were over 30 common mistakes identified to choose from. Systematic mistakes that affected all FEMA types were given the highest priority for inclusion in the list. One or more of the six design and process FEMA content mistakes discussed later in the presentation were found in more than nine out of the 10 design and process FEMAs reviewed. The first mistake that many companies make is to make the quality department the owner of the FMEAs. In many companies, the quality department is given the responsibility for both creating and maintaining the FEMAs. This is wrong for two reasons. First, the quality department does not own the design requirements, the design, or the process that the FEMAs are intended to assess. Second, in most cases, they lack the detailed knowledge necessary to perform the FMEAs correctly. The system FEMA must be owned by the person responsible for defining the design requirements. The design FEMA must be owned by the person responsible for creating the design. The process FEMA must be owned by the person responsible for the process that will be used to produce the product. The second mistake is that the wrong people are selected to participate in the FMEAs. A complete cross-functional team is not required for every FEMA type. There is nothing worse than to have to attend an FMEA that you cannot actively contribute to. System FEMA participants must include people who are knowledgeable about customer requirements and the design requirements required to meet them. Design FEMA participants must include people who are knowledgeable about the design requirements, the design, and any manufacturability issues, any, excuse me, any manufacturability issues that the design might create. Process FEMA participants must include people who are knowledgeable about the process, including possible received material issues, equipment operation, and equipment maintenance. The third mistake is that the FMEAs are done at the wrong time. Many companies do FMEAs because they have to, and consequently the completion date is based more on a paperwork submission date requirement rather than the role the individual FEMA type output plays in the product development system. The first cut of the system FEMA should be completed before the design requirements are released to the designers since its purpose is to assess the adequacy of the design requirements. The first cut of the design FEMA should be completed before the prints are released to the manufacturing process since its purpose is to assess the adequacy of the design. The first cut of the process FEMA should be completed before the process is approved for use since its purpose is to assess the adequacy of the process FEMA in producing the product. The fourth mistake the companies make is to treat the different FEMA types as individual non-integrated forms to be filled out. The system FEMA, design FEMA, and process FEMAs are integrated tools that involve input from and output to multiple elements of the product development system if the effectiveness of the FEMAs is to be optimized. When properly performed and integrated, the three FEMA types are part of 12 different major input-output linkages within the product development system. The fifth mistake companies make that are responsible for the design of the product is not performing a system FEMA. The major objective of the system FEMA is to identify and properly define design requirements. An improperly defined design requirement is the one mistake that cannot be contained using product test testing either during the design phase or after the product is produced since the acceptance criteria for the testing is based on the design requirement. If you get the design requirements wrong, nothing else matters.
The sixth mistake companies make is using RPN to determine what to work on. In the example provided, the severity, occurrence, and detection ratings in the first line of the process FEMA indicate the following. The severity rating of 5 means the process will create an out-of-spec condition that will result in the reduction of a secondary function of the product and consequently its return. The occurrence rating of a 6 means the out-of-spec condition may be present in up to 1% of the product due to the cause identified. The detection rating of 3 means the out-of-spec condition will be contained in the station that creates it within the process. The second line of the process FEMA indicates the severity of 3 means that the process will create an out-of-spec condition that will result in an appearance issue that the customer does not currently find to be a returnable issue. The occurrence rating of 10 means the out-of-spec condition will be present in 10% or more of the product. The detection rating of 8 means the out-of-spec condition will be inspected for visually in the process. If you worked on the line items with the highest RPN number, you would be working on line number 2 with an RPN of 240. It is interesting to note that since the product will not be returned for the appearance issue, this line cost the company no money at all. The second line, however, with the RPN of 90, will cost the company considerable funds because it basically identifies the fact that up to 1% of the product will have to be either reworked or rejected. The seventh mistake a company can make is improper use of the class column. The class column, or special characteristic designation, was created to identify issues that expose the company to unacceptable safety and or financial risk. Because of the unacceptable risk level, any line of the process FEMA with a class symbol, assuming it has been properly determined, must be worked on. The two key components used to determine whether or not the class symbol is warranted is that the severity of the effects of the issue and the expected probability of the issue occurring. The biggest mistake made is when design engineers who have limited knowledge of a process's capability to meet a specification are allowed to sp specify which characteristics are to be given class symbols in the process FEMA based on the severity of the effects of the issue alone without considering the capability of the process. Following are three of the most common content mistakes made when creating a design FEMA. The first of these three most common mistakes is turning the first column into a bill of materials. If the product provides a customer with what they want, the customer does not care about the participation of each of the components. The second most common mistake is only including functional related requirements in the first column. There are 17 different categories of requirements that must be considered when creating a design. Many of these categories of requirements have nothing to do with function. The third most common mistake is putting failure modes in the failure cause column. Component breakage is not a failure cause. It is a failure mode that must be prevented. The ninth mistake that companies make is not placing or doing the process FEMA on the receiving actions. Many FEMA manuals tell you to assume that all received components are received within, in, within specification. After 16 years of being exposed to a wide variety of industries, I can honestly say that I know of no companies whose suppliers always send them within specification products. If a company is an assembler of received components, there is no process step that will affect their ability to be successful more than receiving. It is essential that all manufacturing process, processes assess the risk posed by their suppliers 
and have an adequate plan to deal with it. The proper performance of a process FEMA on received materials is the first step of developing that reaction plan. Following are three of the most common content mistakes found in the process FEMA. The first of the three most common mistakes is putting failure causes in the failure mode column. This is a very common mistake made by people who use the dynamic control plan methodology because of, of a fundamental flaw in the methodology. The second most common mistake is putting non-root causes in the failure cause column. The three causes shown are three of the most popular entries in the failure cause column of a process FEMA. It is not that these are not failure causes, it is that they are not root causes, and unless you get to the root cause, you cannot identify the proper prevention controls to prevent them. The third most common mistake is putting generic entries in the controls column. Again, these three entries here are three of the most common entries we see in process FEMA controls columns. Operator instructions, setup instructions, and first piece inspection. If you remove these 10 mistakes from your FEMA implementation activities and use what the FEMAs teach you about the weaknesses of your products and processes, you will see a significant improvement in the quality of your products and the productivity of your processes.